Hello and welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're going to cover acids, bases, and salts for this chemistry lecture. And we'll be switching back and forth between two applications, so that's why this is going to look a little different. Okay, so let's start by defining acids, bases, and salts. So there's operational definitions, and that's kind of how acids and bases work. For example, Acids form electrolytes in solution, which means that they conduct electricity when dissolved in water. In dilute solutions, acids taste sour and bases taste bitter. Bases feel slippery like soap. Acids turn litmus paper red and phenolphthalein solution colorless. And bases turn litmus paper blue and phenolphthalein pink. Also, bases do, or acids and bases produce a neutralization reaction when they go together, and that's where this comes in. So, when we put these together, it would look like this. Sodium hydroxide, and I apologize for my handwriting, but it is what it is, plus hydrochloric acid. Now, we know that these are two bases and acids, but the operational definition would say, okay, well, it produces NaCl because this is a du double replacement reaction plus HOH, which is also H2O. But I did it HOH so that you could see the double replacement. So these two, this is a base, this is an acid, and this produces a salt and water. So that's one of the next, je next definitions. So we'll open up a new slide and go back to our presentation. The Arrhenius definition, Arrhenius was a S Swedish chemist, and he defined an Arrhenius acid as a substance that releases hydrogen ions as the only positive ions in solution, and a base, an Arrhenius base, is one that produces hydroxide ions, remember hydroxide is OH- as the only negative ion in aqueous solution. So an Arrhenius base and acid will always undergo a neutralization reaction to make salt and water. The Bronsted-Lowry definition is a little looser than Arrhenius, and that's typically the one that we use. <clears throat> Bronsted-Lowry acids are anything that can donate a proton, in other words, hydrogen ions, in solution. So they're called proton donors. And Bronsted-Lowry bases are any uh, any thing that can accept proton ions, and so they're called proton acceptors. So an example would be ammonia plus hydro hydrochloric acid, so let's do that one. So we have ammonia here, NH3, plus hydrochloric acid. Now we don't typically think of ammonia as a base, but when we put them together, we get the ammonium ion and the chloride ion and this is all in aqueous solution. So the ammonia is a proton acceptor, so that makes it a base, and the hydrochloric acid is a proton donor, so that makes it an, a, a Bronsted-Lowry acid. Okay, so next slide. All right, so let's go into this a little bit more. There are multiple definitions for an acid. Bronsted describes acids as proton donors. Arrhenius describes acids as a supplier of hydrogen ions. And Lewis described acids as electron pair acceptors. So there's kind of a whole lot of different ways of looking at it. Think of the hydronium ion as a hydrated hydrogen, ad uh, hydrogen ion. So we have an H plus plus water, and that gives us the hydronium H3O plus 1. Some common acids include these, and you will need to know the names of these, and we'll talk about naming them in the next one, but you will need to know the names of these. So this first one is hydrochloric acid, the second one is sulfuric acid, the third is nitric acid, the next is acetic acid, which is vinegar, and the final one is carbonic acid, which is uh, soda water. All acids turn litmus paper red and they contain hydrogen. They taste sour like citrus fruits do and they neutralize bases. Acids can also be corrosive and they react with carbonates 
to, which is important in limestone caves and sinkholes. In other words, if you didn't have acidic water, you wouldn't have these beautiful caves. They also re react with metals, and when they do, they release hydrogen gas. Remember, this is really, really important. If you're ever dealing with acids and you need to dilute them, you it, it's kind of stupid, but it's it works. As, add acid to water like you otter, because otherwise this reduces the chance that it'll blow up in your face due to the heat of reaction making steam rapidly. And you can see that happening here in the picture. The denser acid will sink and then disperse more evenly. Bases are proton acceptors, and some of the common bases are these, and you need to know these, so make sure that you're taking notes. The first is sodium hydroxide, which is found in lye and Drano. The second is potassium hydroxide, which is called caustic potash. Non-caustic potash is actually what you add to your garden. Ammonium hydroxide is the third one, and that's household ammonia. Magnesium hydroxide is the, is the fourth one, and that's milk of magnesia. That's what you take for an upset tummy. Sodium carbonate is the next one, and that is a baking soda. And calcium hydroxide, or quicklime, also something you would add to your garden. Bases turn litmus blue, and they taste bitter like soap. They usually contain the hydroxide ion in aqueous solution, and they neutralize acids. Some words that will describe bases are slippery, slimy, gungy, caustic, and alkaline. So if you see any of those, you know you're talking about a base. So, remember, when we have acids and bases and we add them together, it neutralizes it. So acid and base produces a salt and water. And so you take a look at this first one. We've got sulfuric acid with sodium hydroxide and that gives us sodium sulfate in water. Sodium sulfate is going to be the salt. You will be, you will be required to identify which is which. What's the acid? What's the base? What's the salt? Obviously you'll know which one the water is. Ionic equations will also show the predominating reaction species. And that also shows you the heat produced. The equilibrium constant is referred to as K. Okay, and a large K means a strong acid, which means it's highly ionized. So you find K by taking the concentration of the hydrogen ions times the concentration of the anion produced divided by the concentration of the original acid. That will tell you the equilibrium constant for that acid. A salt is a compound derived from a reaction of an acid and a base, or from ions on the opposite sides of the periodic table. Okay, so here's one that I thought was pretty interesting, and this is Batman meets the deadly acid. And you can see here that he is rushing into an area and there's um, deadly acid, and it says the highly trained animal leaps from the slide over the waiting vat of deadly acid. And Robin's saying, careful, Batman, it may be a trap. There was absolutely nothing going on between Batman and Robin. Really, I mean that. He says, no time to be careful. And it says, will this leaping lawman sail into the searing soup? Let's find out. So he goes down the slide. Robin's screaming at him, don't slip. That acid is certain, vat of acid is certain death. I can't even get to my utility belt, but I'm going in. At least I may be able to give you a chance. He's sacrificing himself. So he goes into the acid. And Robin goes in and he says, We'll be together in death as we were in life. Again, nothing was going on between them two, really. And he says, But there's nothing but water. And he says, Water now. I had to gamble. And he put, he put, he put a base in the, in the acid to create water. Um, and salt. And so did this actually happen? Could he have done it? So we're going to take the volume of the tank and we calculate the volume by V equals pi r squared times the height. So let's say the tank is two meters in diameter and about two meters deep because you know they were sitting there quite comfortably with two of them in it. 
So our volume, and we're going to do this over here, um, our volume is going to be, let's use 3.14 times for pi times 1 times 1 times 2. And I'm sorry, we're going to make it 1 meter deep, deep because they were standing up at like waist height. So our volume is going to give us 6 cubic meters, which is the same thing as 6,000 liters. So that's how much volume we're working with here. We know that it was sulfuric, or, or yeah, sulfuric acid. So here's our equation, H2SO4 plus 2NaOH, because it used sodium hydroxide to neutralize it, gives us Na2SO4 plus two waters, and that all ever important 13 kilocals per mole. We'll get to that in a second. All right, so the density of sulfuric acid is twice that of water. So the mass of the acid in the vat at 6,000 liters is going to be 12,000 kilograms. We can also do that in scientific, so 12.0 times 10 to the 6 grams. So we'd need close to 10 metric tons of sodium hydroxide in order to neutralize the acid. So that would be a ginormous utility belt. But let's say, okay, let's say he did have that much uh, sodium hydroxide. So when we put this together, what's that mean? So we have, we have this 12.0 times 10 to the 6 moles of acid. Time, or, or sorry, we've got to do this times... Um, get the moles. So we've got 12.0 times 10 to the 6 grams of sulfuric acid. So then we're going to multiply that across and find out how much we've got in moles. So one mole of sulfuric acid, H2SO4, divided by the molecular weight, which I need my calculator. So hydrogen weighs two, and I'm just gonna do the round whole numbers in the front. So hydrogen weighs two, because there's two hydrogens, plus 32 plus, for the sulfur, plus four oxygens, which is 64. So our total molecular mass is 98 grams. So that gives us the number of moles. So let's see, that's, 12,000 divided by 98 gives us 122.45 moles. Then what we do is we multiply it by the number of kilocalories per mole to find out how much heat is produced. So we've got 13 kilocalories And that gives us 1,592 kilocalories of heat produced. So basically we have bat stew. So he could not have survived it just from the heat alone, even if he had enough sodium hydroxide. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our introduction to acids, bases, and the neutralization reaction. We're going to go more into that on the next lecture. I hope you have a great day.